Hello, I'm here to talk about Meadow, which is our browser-based implementation and um, exploration environment for Marlowe, the financial contracts language. I'll just give a very brief introduction to Marlowe and, and Meadow, and then we'll show the demo. I'll also give you a link where you can find out more information. That's the GitHub page for the project. Okay, Marlowe is a language in which we can describe financial contracts which are to be enforced on blockchain. It's worked with IOHK, so it's initially targeted at the Cardano settlement layer. What we provide is a user-focused user DSL for writing contracts. Writing in a DSL rather than in a um, general purpose language has a whole lot of advantages. We can, for instance, much more easily than in a general purpose case, provide analyses, can this contract fail, for example, and we can even guarantee properties by formal proof. We can use um, can use the, the contracts written in the language uh, to generate smart interfaces inside users' wallets. Um, and we see this as a proof of concept for, for other DSLs running on blockchain. What about Meadow? Meadow gives a browser-based simulation environment, so you can write a, a Marlowe contract and then you can step-by-step -step interact with it inside the browser. The contracts themselves are written um, in programmatic form, simple programs, but we also provide an environment for describing contracts in a, um, using a visual programming language called Blockly. And I'll, I'll show you how that works. We can intertranslate between the textual form and the, the Blockly form. From the contracts, we generate a smart interface so that you're offered inside the simulator a chance to um, only do the inputs that will actually have, have an effect at that stage. So you're guided by the interface to what, how you can interact with the contract. And finally, Marlowe is in fact embedded inside Haskell and we provide an environment which allows you to develop embedded contracts in Haskell. We, in fact, we use the subset of Haskell um, called Fay um, because that works better in the in-browser environment, but, but Haskell will work fine as well, um, to allow you to, to use some abbreviations from um, Haskell or whatever to support you writing more readable contracts, then have those contracts translated into pure Marlowe, and then you can interact with those, with the results. Okay, one final thing. Here's the URL of the GitHub repo, and you can find links from there to other materials about Marlowe. You can find a link to the um, online version of Meadow. So you can get started by uh, going to that link. Okay, but now let's let's turn our attention to the um, to Meadow itself. Now let's take a look at what we see in Meadow. I'm going to zoom in in a second, but let's just look at the the overall structure. On the left of the screen here, we have the Blockly rendering of a contract. I'm just going to zoom out a bit. You can see the whole contract is rendered like this. Um, so there you see the contract. The contract we're looking at here is um, a simple, simple escrow contract. Oh, no, I think this is deposit incentive, isn't it? Um, Let's have a look. So there we see, um, you see the whole contract there. And this is built up on the left-hand side by, by um, blocks, which represent the constructors of Marlowe. If we, let's just zoom back in again a bit. If we click on um, contract here, you see this shows us in visual form the all the different ways that you can build up a contract. Um, for example, here, we have a when. This says when when an observation happens, do something, um, and it provides the alternative here. And you can see the, the boxes here are expecting other things to appear. So this is a contract shape box here and here. 
This is a um, an observation shaped box here. So you can see how the different boxes fit in. And you can see in the, um, in the example here, we have a when, it has an observation there, and then it has, um, it has the continuation contract and the, the, the contract that is executed if the, um, if the condition is never true. So there we see Blockly rendering. Here we see a similar, just zoom in a tiny bit more, um, you can see a similar textual rendering of the contract. Um, you've got the when there and, and the various components that take place. And you can, the way that block uh, Meadow is set up, you can move from, if, I'm to make, if I were to make a change in here, say I change that 200 to 100, I can make that change happen here as well. So I can move, and if I were to change this to 300, um, I can then make sure that change is reflected back in the text here. So we've got two different ways of looking at the same contract. Okay, so that's that's really, I'm not going to say too much more about the, the Blockly side of things, um, but that gives us a different interface to building contracts. Let's look now at what we have on this side. What you can see at the top is the, um, the window where we can enter and edit Marlowe contracts. And you can see we've got the buttons underneath that, um, that allow us to move to and fro between code and Blockly. We can clear what's in the editor, we can execute, we'll come back to that in a minute, and we can use the Haskell embedding editor, we'll also come to that in a minute. What we see right at the bottom is a way of, we can load three built-in examples, a deposit incentive, which is the one we're looking at here, um, an escrow contract, and a, um, a crowdfunding contract. Let's look now at a particular example and executing that example. What we have here is a deposit incentive example. Person one deposits 100 ADA, person two deposits 20, and then if at any point either of them wants to get out of the deal, they can each get their money back. But if they wait until time 100, we see this uh, block 100, then it's possible for that a um, person one will get both lots of money. They'll get the 100 plus they'll get the 20 from person two. Now, I don't particularly want to, to have to press the execute button 100 times, so let's change this. Let's just make this 12 here. And you can see this is the code has changed. We can look in the Blockly. Um, the Blockly has changed as well. So let's think about executing this. And what's nice here is if we look at the smart interface, the smart interface suggests to us what it's sensible for us to do. So it gives us a way of interacting with the contract. Um, it says, Let's make a commit. Let person one make a commitment. Okay, let's let's have a look at that. Let's add that action, and then let's execute one block's worth of this contract. You can see the contract has evolved. Now we the the thing at the top. The next thing to do is person two to commit some cash, and indeed you see that in the actions. Let's add that as an action, and then execute that. And now you can see that the main contract, both as reflected in the, the Blockly on the left and in the text above the, uh, at the top here, is when somebody has, makes a choice, up to time 12, both people are allowed to redeem. If a choice isn't made up to time 12, then what happens is the payment is made to um, the payment of, of person two's 20 is made to person one. So let's just execute this. And you can see nothing. You can also see on the right hand side, the contract state isn't changing, no input or output is happening. We'll just carry on. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now, let's go to, we advance to block 13. You can now see that 
we're able to add an action and add all these actions claiming the payment and what will happen now is that we execute those and the contract is finished. A, person one, claims all the money and the contract is finished. So we're able to interact with the contract like that. As you can see, the smart interface was always telling us what we could do at the next stage. Okay, I want to finish just briefly showing you the, the, the way that we can use the embedded language. Now let's let's take a look. Let's load another example in here. This is the example of escrow. And what you see on the left is there's, there's all the details on the right telling you how to use this on all the features that we provide. I just wanted to show you really that what we have on the left is a contract um, in which we use something like this. We say majority chose refund. What we're able to do is write abbreviations like majority chose means the two of Alice, Bob and Carol chose a particular option. And we've got a number of other abbreviations in here, which are simple Haskell functions. In order to read these, you really don't need to be a Haskell expert. We're saying we're naming that instead of having people called one, two and three, we're calling them Alice, Bob and Carol. Um, and here we're, we're, we'd, we've got a, a, a simple um, some simple abbreviations which um, have some parameters. So we've got redeem original is, is just a shorthand for redeem a particular, um, a particular commitment. And also we're able to say that chose person and C is, is a, a, a simpler rendering of this, this simple contract on the, on the simple observation, sorry, on the, on the right hand side. What we have here, then, this contract uses some of these abbreviations, some of these, these functions from Haskell. And if we're to use it inside our plot, inside Meadow, we need to turn it into pure Marlow. So what we can do is we can actually, in the browser, we can run Haskell or a, or a, a subset of it called Fay. And what we can do, that we're doing that now, it's running in here and what we see now is the that contract expanded out and you can see that what we see on the left um, is much more readable than what we see on the right because we're able to make these um, these various abbreviations about majority choosing refund or majority choosing pay it's much easier to read that than it is to read what we have on, on the right hand side um, now what we can then do is we can export that contract into meadow and if we close the editor, we now have that contract sitting in our, our visualization. So to conclude, you can see that we can create contracts inside our um, embedded language. We can convert those to, to pure Marlowe contracts. We can visualize those as Blockly, or we simply see them as text. And then we can interact with those contracts using the smart interface. So you're able to write a contract and then to interact with it, understand how it behaves, see what inputs it will take, see what outputs it produces, without having to run it on the blockchain. You've got this environment where you can try things out, see how they behave, reassure yourself that in fact your contract is doing what it should be doing. So we hope you find this tool useful. It's still in development. There'll be other things that we'll be, we'll be adding, other tweaks we'll be making, perhaps even fixing a few bugs. But uh, we hope it, we find it useful to you as a way of understanding how our Marlowe contracts behave. Thanks very much.